This is the Music History Today podcast for September 11th. On today's show, the tragic events in 2001 affect music for the decades that followed. Stravinsky premieres an opera and the father of the blues releases a classic song. First up, though, on this date in 1914, the father of the blues, blues great W.C. Handy, published his song St. Louis Blues. In 1958, Lloyd Price recorded the song Stagger Lee and Laverne Baker recorded the song I Cried a Tear. In 1962, the Beatles recorded their song Love Me Do and also the song P.S. I Love You. In 1964, George Harrison formed the music publishing company Mourn York Limited. In 1966, the Rolling Stones performed on the Ed Sullivan TV show. In 1967, the Beatles started filming their movie, Magical Mystery Tour. In 1971, the Jackson 5 cartoon show premiered on ABC television. In 1977, David Bowie recorded his part on Bing Crosby's Merry Old Christmas TV special. Their duet of Little Drummer Boy and Peace on Earth went on to become a Christmas classic song. In 1987, Jaco Pastorius of Weather Report got into a bar fight. He passed away from his injuries 10 days later. In 1993, country music singer Merle Haggard married his wife, Teresa Ann Lane. In 2000, the music video talk show 106 and Park premiered on BET television. In 2001, the terror attacks in New York City, Washington, D.C., and in Pennsylvania took place. Among the almost 3,000 people who were killed that day was jazz singer Betty Farmer, who was in one of the towers at the World Trade Center. Radio stations stopped playing music for the first time in decades and simulcasted newscasts. Later that afternoon, members of Congress went on to the United States Capitol building steps and sang God Bless America. Musically, rapper and actor Mark Wahlberg was supposed to have been on one of those flights coming out of Boston, but he missed the flight, thankfully, because his flight was one of the ones that crashed into the World Trade Center. The events of that day also literally changed some albums. Dream Theater changed the cover art to their new album, as did Bush. Sheryl Crow decided not to release a song about having a lack of heroes. The Dave Matthews Band changed their next single release from When the World Ends to Every Day. The Strokes removed the anti-police brutality song New York City Cops from their CD release of their album Is This It, which also came out that day. A lot of songs were written about that day, from the Beastie Boys' An Open Letter to NYC, to Beyonce with I Was There, to Mary Chapin Carpenter with Grand Central Station, to two songs from Sheryl Crow for her album, Detours. Bruce Springsteen put out an entire album about it called The Rising. Gerard Way watched the Twin Towers come down as he was riding across the New York City Harbor, on the ferry, that is. The experience actually led to him following his dreams and started his band, My Chemical Romance. On the censorship front, Clear Channel Radio Station Company had a list of songs that were, quote, of questionable taste, end quote, that they stopped playing, or at least highly suggested that the radio station stop playing. On that list were songs like Billy Joel's Only the Good Die Young, Dave Matthews Band's Crash Into Me, and every single song that Rage Against the Machine has ever put out, which the band actually took as a badge of honor. We discuss more in depth about the tragic events of this day and their effects on music on this week's Music History In-Depth podcast, which has already dropped on this channel. Just go back and look at uh, the Music History In-Depth podcast for September 11th through the 17th. Please like, subscribe, and do all that funky stuff that the algorithm always tells you to do. Moving on. Also, in 2011, the group JKT48 was formed. On that same day, the Mexican version of the singing reality show The Voice, called La Voz, premiered on Televisa. And in 2022, the TV show Monarch, which starred country music singer Trace Atkins, premiered. 
In classical music, in 1850, opera singer Jenny Lind performed in America for the first time, and in 1951, Stravinsky premiered the opera The Rake's Progress. In theater, in 1971, the Broadway show Two by Two closed. In award ceremonies that were held on September 11th, in 1959, Duke Ellington received the Spring Iron Medal from the NAACP. And in 1987, Peter Gabriel was the big winner at the MTV Video Music Awards as his music video for Sledgehammer won Video of the Year. Albums that were released in the UK on September 11th include in 1964 when Manfred Mann released The Five Faces of Manfred Mann and in 1998, Steps released Step One. Meanwhile in America, in 1967, The Beach Boys released Smiley Smile and Chad and Jeremy released Of Cabbages and Kings. In 1973, Bruce Springsteen released The Wild, The Innocent and The E Street Shuffle. In 1978, Gentle Giant released Giant for a Day. In 1979, Foreigner released Head Games. In 1981, Ultravox released Rage in Eden. In 1985, Falco released Falco 3. In 1986, Triumph released The Sport of Kings. In 1987, Jethro Tull released Crest of a Knave. In 1987, same day, The Temptations released Together Again. In 1989, Melissa Etheridge released Brave and Crazy. Also in 1989, Eurythmics released We Two Are One. In 1990, Warrant released Cherry Pie. And also on that same day, Bob Dylan released Under the Red Sky. In 1991, Stephen Stills released Stills Alone. In 1995, Blur released The Great Escape. And Dion released his greatest hits album. And Lenny Kravitz released Circus. In 1996, Belinda Carlisle released A Man and a Woman. In 1997, Mariah Carey released Butterfly. In 2001, Jay-Z released The Blueprint. The Strokes released This Is It. Bob Dylan released Love and Theft. Mariah Carey released the soundtrack to the movie Glitter. John Hyatt released The Tiki Bar is Open. Nickelback released Silver Side Up and Boz Skaggs released Dig. In 2012, the Dave Matthews Band released Away From The World, and Bob Dylan released Tempest. In 2013, The Clash released The Clash Hits Back. In 2015, The Scorpions released Return To Forever. Also in 2015, Duran Duran released Paper Gods. Singles that were released in the UK on September 11th include in 1964 when The Hollies released We're Through. Meanwhile, in America, in 1962, Sam Cooke released Somebody Have Mercy. In 1972, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes released If You Don't Know Me By Now, classic song. In 1979, The Who released 515. In 1990, UB40 released The Way You Do The Things You Do. In 2000, Huey Lewis and Gwyneth Paltrow released their version of Smokey Robinson's song Cruisin'. Their version was done for the soundtrack to their movie, Duets. The movie did decent box office, but their song hit number one on the adult contemporary charts. In 2007, Chris Brown released Kiss Kiss, and in 2011, One Direction released What Makes You Beautiful. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on September 11th include DJ Kygo or DJ Kigo, depending on what side of the pond you're on. Singer and actor Harry Connick Jr., EDM singer-producer Moby, rapper and actor Ludacris, singer and actress Taraji Henson, John Buckland of Coldplay, reggae artist Elephant Man, entertainer extraordinaire Miss Lola Falana, Tommy Shaw of Styx and also the group Damn Yankees, singer Somo, Richard Ashcroft of The Verve, 
rapper Miles Stevenson, singer Nevia, rapper Swarms, singer Francesco Yates, rapper CRO, singer Mackenzie Borg, John Moss of Culture Club, Mickey Hart of The Grateful Dead, Neil X of 66 Sputnik, Dennis Tufano of The Buckinghams, Jack Eli of The Kingsmen, singer Julie Covington, harmonica player Juke Logan, Bob Catley of Magnum, drummer Jerry Conway, singer John Martin, Dave Bedini of the Rio Statics, bassist Victor Wooten, Charles Kelly of Lady A, or back in the day known as Lady Antebellum, Hiram Bullock of Paul Schaefer and the World's Most Dangerous Band, Kay Hanley of Letters to Cleo, composer Arvo Part, pianist Oliver Jones, Singer Leo Kotke, keyboardist Mick Talbot of the Merton Parkas, also Dexy's Midnight Runners, also the Bureau, and also the Style Council. Drummer Rory Lyons of King Kurt, keyboardist Gregory Kane of Hue and Cry, percussionist Bart Vander Zilu of Case Choice, singer and guitarist Jeremy Pupoff of the band Lit. Singer Brad Facchetti of Light Funky Ones. Singer Ben Lee of Noise Addict. Drummer Andals Herrick of Chimera. Singer Kakenzi of American Idol fame. Bassist Gidget Kine of Marilyn Manson. Singer Phil May of The Pretty Things. Composer and trumpet player Ian Hamer. Trumpet player Bert Courtley. Composer Harry Summers. Pianist Johnny Asaya, singer and actor George Metexa, composer Jimmy Davis, trumpet player Sidney Devine, music critic Edward Hanslick, composer Friedrich Kalua, composer William Boyce, singer-songwriter Charles Patrick of the Monotones. We're unfortunately going to mention Charles again in a few minutes. Artists who unfortunately passed away on September 11th include composer Johann Stobaus, who passed away in 1646 at the age of 66. Composer Henri-Philippe Girard passed away in 1848 at the age of 87. Composer Francis Child passed away in 1896 at the age of 71. Composer Adolphe Abraham Samuel passed away in 1898 at the age of 74. Composer and organist Mikoslaw Serzinski passed away in 1924 at the age of 57. Composer Robert Lotch passed away in 1958 at the age of 84. Country music singer Leon Payne passed away in 1969 at the age of 52. The composer of the Czech national anthem, Jan Kunk, passed away in 1976 at the age of 93. Composer Jose Calcano passed away in 1980 at the age of 80. Composer William Alwyn passed away in 1985 at the age of 79. Peter Tosh of Bob Marley and the Whalers was shot and killed during a home invasion in Jamaica in 1987 at the age of 42. Violinist Ludovic Feldman passed away in 1987 at the age of 94. Conductor Eric Leinsdorf passed away in 1993 at the age of 81. Jazz singer, the aforementioned Miss Betty Farmer, passed away at the World Trade Center during the terrorist attacks in 2001 at the age of 62. Bassist T-Bone Hannon of Jules Band passed away from a brain aneurysm in 2003 at the age of 39. Lyricist Fred Ebb passed away in 2004 at the age of 76. Joe Zawinul of Weather Report passed away in 2007 at the age of 75. Singer Willie T passed away from cancer in 2007 at the age of 63. Punk rocker Jim Carroll passed away from heart issues in 2009 at the age of 60. Johnny Perez of the Sir Douglas Quintet passed away from cirrhosis of the liver in 2012 at the age of 69. Songwriter Bob Crew passed away in 2014 at the age of 83. Composer Antoine Duramel passed away in 2014 at the age of 89. The New Orleans recording studio owner who recorded Little Richards and Fats Domino, Mr. Cosimo Matassa, passed away in 2014 at the age of 88. 
The opera director at the Royal Shakespeare Company, Mr. Peter Hall, passed away in 2017 at the age of 86. Musician Daniel Johnston passed away from heart issues in 2019 at the age of 58. Toots Hibbert of Toots and the Mitels passed away from COVID-19 in 2020 at the age of 77. And the aforementioned singer-songwriter Mr. Charles Patrick of the group The Monotones passed away in 2020 at the age of 82. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is September 12th, when in 2003, the world loses the man in black, Mr. Johnny Cash. <laughs> 